the Prince of Personality, Bubsy! What could possibly go wrong? And because I'm a hero for crying out loud... I've got a question for you all today. How many years of hate and violent beatdowns does it take for an old gaming mascot to just bugger off? Well, if Bubsy making a return on the PS4 is an answer to go by, IT TAKES TOO LONG! Holy mother of Bobcat bollocks, how did I end up back here? For those who are blissfully unaware of the terrible deeds committed by Bubsy the Bobcat ever since his debut in 1993, let me quickly fill you in. During the advent of character platformers being huge successes thanks to Mario and Sonic, causing platformer mascots to be as hot as Battle Royale games are today, every single company you could imagine tried getting their own cartoon character who could run and jump their way through Hellfire to save some random bitch or kick Dr. Machino in the butt, apparently. The company who made the Gears of War games and funnily enough, Fortnite? They had a mascot. The company who made that horrendous PS1 South Park game? They had a mascot. And another mascot. The company who makes WWE games today? They had a mascot. Guess who it was? No, no, seriously. For a company that makes sports games all about big old beefy boys beating their backs, guess who their attempt of a platforming mascot was in the 90s? It was a lonely and desperate time. The point is, everyone wanted a slice of the platforming pie in the early to mid 90s, which led to a company known as Accolade, who also made this game, who also made this game, to develop a game known as Bubsy, Claws Encounters of the Third, C <laughs> kiss my ass. What happens when you mix busy and dense Mario level design with the speed of Sonic and the fragility of Crash Bandicoot? You get a total mess that might as well be called Bubsy the Copycat. Bubsy one has its fans, but God, that's all it has. I personally can't stand the game nor its sequel, which is more of the exact same, but with more original vision. Ideas. The Jaguar game can crawl into a hole and die along with the Jaguar itself while an actual Jaguar comes in to eat them both and vomit them up again and then die. And as for the first time Bubsy entered the realm of 3D platformers, I took a look at that game a few years back. You f piece of sh floating in a bit of cold soup garnish with even more f from an old obese man's I didn't like it. What I really admire though is that despite the malice towards the character and the failure of the absolutely terrible and rightly cancelled TV pilot, Accolade didn't let any of that get them down until they dropped Bubsy forever. And so another company known as Black Forest Games came out of absolutely nowhere and decided to lift the noose off of Bubsy's neck and resuscitate him, ready for a comeback to the PS4 and PC in 2017. Nobody asked for it, but enough of you memed him to make it a reality. And the moral of the story, boys and girls, is that memes are shit! <laughs> Time to play the game! Oh, what's this then? I thought I was playing a 2017 Steam game, not RuneScape. Bubsy, the Woolies Strike Back. Thank the Lord it's not the Willy Strike Back because having three on your head is more than enough for me. Okay, so say what you want about the previous Bubsy games. At least Bubsy 3D had a sodding intro cutscene, something to drive what little story there was and make you care about that. Yeah, I know it didn't work, but the point is that it's 20 times better than what this 2017 modern indie game can muster. You get 10 seconds of an intro to this game, all in still images. There's a wall, there's a rumbling, there's a knob, there's the bad guys taking away some random golden wool, and the title screen happens. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, I don't know, everything. But it gets even better. Not only was that intro cutscene flaccid and pathetic, but you start the game up, pick level one of the tutorial, and without any kind of flashy build-up, excitement, interesting loading screen, clever jokes, or anything, you just jump cut it and plonk straight into the game. Like, I'm totally stunned here. For all the meme status and the new devs riding on the love-hate Bubsy train to build this game up, I'm actually shocked there isn't any kind of, well, fanfare going on to kick things off. There's nothing even self-referential or nostalgic for actual fans of Bubsy as well. I'm five minutes into this game and everything has just happened so far with no flow, no reason. And you go through all of this toss for a game that actually controls pretty decently. Didn't expect me to say that, did you? I'm not joking, the game actually controls pretty well. The physics are what I'd hoped they would be, the running speed is perfect for the camera distance, Bubsy's glide is extremely smooth to use, the jump arc and mid-air control are on point. Bubsy, why are you making me feel this way? Stop confusing everyone. Look, you're even scaring the collectibles away. What the actual hell is going on with the yarn here? I can assure you this is not my PC. I can run Far Cry 5 on high graphic settings at 60 FPS flawlessly, and I restarted the game multiple times fiddling with the graphics options because there's no way to do that within the game itself. And yet, no matter what I did, these Windows 95 R's options menus didn't change anything or address the slight problem that, oh, I don't know, the collectibles that appear in a platformer with collectibles don't show up! But sometimes they do, it just depends on where you are in relation to the objects, and I can't figure out what the hell the game is trying to pull here. This isn't only even in the collectibles either. Look at that rock. It's on fire here. And then it isn't. But then something happened in one of the later stages, and this something almost made me figure out what the problem was. Look, this is actually some kind of imprint at the very beginning of this stage.
stage superimposed as an extra layer on the game itself, but only as an invisible layer that hides any object around its outlines. Either I have accidentally picked the hard mode of this game, or this is an ingenious artistic metaphor to the fact that Bubsy himself has burned his image into your retinas, into your subconscious, and no matter what game you play, no matter what genre, how modern or old, he will always be there, lurking in the background as a phantom distracting you from the tasks and obscuring the important things you should be doing, but you cannot, for he is always there, in the way, forever. Or it's just... shy. And yeah, this may be a step up from Bubsy's last game, not like that saying much, but even if this weird glitch weren't a problem, this wouldn't save the game from how bloody boring it looks. Well, except for those moments when you're climbing a wall and then hit an enemy's head which causes you to climb upwards really fast, that's pretty interesting. I mean, just look at it. If there's one thing you can commend the original games on, it's that they at least had creatively messed up and interestingly animated stages, but here? I'm falling asleep just looking at this, and while I sleep, I dream of the end. Hell, I would honestly rather look at Bubsy 3D over this crap, because at least you could argue that game has some abstract blocky designs and striking colour to it to make it more memorable despite how awful it looks. This is just... well... What can I say about it? Basic animations across the board, basic uninspired obstacles copied and pasted absolutely everywhere, enemies that either disappear the second you kill them, or just hang around and then jump cut out of existence. In fact, as I write this script, I'm not even looking at gameplay, and I can tell you that I don't even trust my own notes because I don't remember how this game looks right now. Bubsy is making me curmudgeonly. It's so forgettable, and the same can be said for the music, which repeats the same stock loops over most of the stages I managed to be able to stomach before my acid reflux happened. No joke, this is a stage from World 1. And this is a stage from World 2. Not flying. Wait. Same music and basically the exact same style of visuals but just coloured a little bit differently with different objects. I wish I could say more but I can't, it's just so damn boring. Try pouncing to attack enemies, well that's easy for you to say Mr. Game but have you actually tried to do that yourself? It's useless, you either fly over everything immediately into danger or it just doesn't work at all so instead why don't you try pouncing to make a better game. Well, I mean, despite the fact this game is so bad, even the collectibles don't want to be in it, I still somehow managed to grab 399 out of 400 yarn on the tutorial stage. Celebration of my impeccable skill aside, though, the gameplay itself doesn't serve much better on its own anyway. Everything you've seen so far, this is the whole game. Every single bit of it. Run from left to right, jump, glide, climb around, bop enemies, collect weird vanishing yarn, and smash into obstacles that will occasionally let you in on a special secret. That's it, though. That's the whole game, and the importance of collecting the world is for your score and your score. Even the keys that unlock the special vault in each level, yeah, they just let you grab more yarn for your score. Why give us a tally and make these things the most prominent collectible, and even hide optional collectibles for access to a locked off part of the stage if none of it means anything? And furthermore, why is there absolutely nothing else going on here? Ignoring the fact you can bypass everything because there's nothing of any value to help you out on your quest, no power-ups or anything, this is some of the most insipid level design for a platformer I have ever seen. The copied and pasted obstacles and enemies certainly help out with the blandness and repetition, but what's with the vast amounts of nothing? What's with the random walls everywhere forming extremely basic paths? What's with the lack of anything interesting that looks like it's actually built into the stage? What's with the spring pads that don't serve any purpose to the level design other than to spring you upwards for no reason? It feels like you're platforming not through carefully thought out stages, but instead a custom Smash Brothers brawl stage made by a 12 year old boy who has more spots on his face than brain cells. It's just the most basic of elements and environments placed on top of a flat background like shelves nailed on a flat wall in Ikea but it's one of those shelf and wall sets that nobody really likes or cares about so they put them at the back of Ikea because it's only for the old people who get lost in there. There's nothing to say about any of it other than how boring it looks, how boring it feels, how boring it's designed. I'm running out of ways to say it sucks because god it does. And it's worth mentioning at this point that on Steam I paid £15.49 for this. Hey Siri, how much is £15.49 in dollars? £15.49 and 49 pence in dollars is still far too much for Bubsy's Willy Strikes wait, wait, Back. No, and you have to go through all of this fuss over golden wool. What's so great about that? What can you do with golden wool anyway? Isn't it too stiff? What are you supposed to do? Knit yourself some stiff golden socks to wear while you keep snuggly in your stiff golden jumper while sucking on your stiff golden blanket? <laughs> Good God, that was a violent death. What was with that noise? That seems highly unnecessary. But at the same time, it's Bubsy, so it feels good. Oh, come on. You know I'm your hero. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Bubsy, you blundering, brainless, boorish bastard. Why don't you ever shut up? I get it. You have a mouth. That's fine. But you don't need to use it all the time. How am I gliding? I'm a 
about gliding down. <laughs> Bouncies and a pouncing spray. So shiny. <laughs> and that's one of the main reasons people couldn't stand you in the 90s. <laughs> But hey, this is a modern game after all, so maybe there's something in the options menu to remove the voices entirely. That would be very nice. Oh look, there is. And there's even cute little descriptions for each level of how talkative you want Bubsy to be. So that there's the lowest. Okay, let's just rename that to tolerable. But what on earth could they possibly call the highest level? Bubsy. Bubsy. Bubsy! Did you know they released this game on Halloween? Yeah, I'm not joking. They, they knew how terrifying this was. I don't know how much longer I can go on now. Let's at least get the first boss out of the way and see what happens. And wouldn't you know, I got hit by a big old fire attack that was invisible, and at the end of the fight, I smashed the UFO into the corner. Definitely should have got mauled into bobcat pace, but I didn't, which then ended the fight because Bubsy may as well be a vampire with how much he refuses to die. Why does this exist? Who asked for it? And more importantly, how is it that a game series that hasn't seen the light of day in 21 years comes back with a game this bad? It's boring, it's ugly, I don't know which is worse. I might just split my pants now if I don't die laughing first. The world was a lot different in the 90s. With barely any internet, information and jokes being spread around to millions of people was almost unheard of without TV, movie or magazine endorsement. And if you were terrible, the public voted with their wallets and you'd never be heard of again. But nowadays, where Bubsy used to be just a pest, he's now an ironic meme god. And this game is the perfect time capsule for the future of how a company could cash in on this infamous status of something without any further care put into the product itself because you buy it almost expecting it to be awful. Awful. And that's the joke that you're paying for. But it's a joke at your expense. You spent this much money on it. I could have bought a McDonald's meal out for my family with that money, but instead I'm sat here, alone, hungry, looking at my knobbly knees in disgust as I wonder how my life ended up here all because of an orange freak. Bungie Bobcat here. I want you to die! Hey there everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, and don't worry, the outtakes will be on in just a second, but first I'd love to thank the sponsors for today's video, BetterHelp. An incredible online service that connects you with a personalised therapist or counsellor wherever you want to, whenever you want to, at home, outdoors, at the gym, on your phone, your tablet, on email, it's entirely up to you. Life is a super stressful and difficult thing to deal with sometimes, and there is no shame in admitting every so often that you do need someone to talk to and you do need somebody to help you. And speaking as somebody who is on medication for depression anxiety today, I'm immensely glad that nowadays, with the internet, a service like this can exist. Not just for the convenience of being able to do this wherever you want to, whenever you want to, in complete anonymity if you want to, but also from the affordability of it. And speaking of that, if you do need a little bit of financial help, if you qualify, the service can help you out with that as well. So please click the link below in the description to start the conversation. Please enjoy the outtakes after the Patreon credits. <laughs> I'd love to thank the top tier Patreon supporters in the description below. Omama2, Basil, Gamerman, I Have a Portal Gun, Robert Alamsha, Oblivion Rising, William Sanborn, Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Zakari, Mills Kahai, Binary Code, Kirsten B, QB, Cyberpunk Symphony, Thomas Olsen, Nathan Young, Ellen Rilpley, Josh at Van Hamburg, Jezebel, James Nardiello, also known as The Game Shed on YouTube, Daniel Lee on DC Dungeon Master, Braden Kenny, Mitchell Reed, Jane Ives, and AD Thornton Smith. Thank you so much, every single one of you. Nobody asked for it, but enough of you memed him enough for it to be... <laughs> oh, oh no. No, Stan! Just go, just okay, go. Oh, right. shut up. Just okay. go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Crying. I'm not doing anything! Hey Siri, how much is 15 pound? Stan doesn't like- Would you like me to convert 15 pounds to? Ask Stan. He doesn't like pounds. Your message to No, don't send it to the landlord! No! <laughs> 